Welcome to the webinar Data Logger Operating Program. My name is Peter Schäffeler. I am the Product Manager at OddHydromat for Data Loggers. Today's webinar is about the Odd Data Log Operating Program and here especially about the new features of this program. So this webinar is not intended to be a basic training on the Data Log Operating Program but covers more than new features of the Data Log Operating Program. Therefore, it's quite helpful if you have already basic knowledge about the program. What will we cover in this webinar? First of all, a very brief introduction to the DOT NetDL data logger, which are the data loggers we control and program with the data logger operating program. After this short introduction, we will talk about the new possibilities, which are a phone book, channel templates, how to create own templates or to download templates from the homepage, how to use the diagnostic file, the features of the online help function, the SDI 12 interface module, and the data readout and display functionality. Let's start with an introduction with the .NETDL data loggers. The data loggers we control and program are, are the .NETDL 500 and 1000. What are the main features of this data logger family? First of all, it's an internet protocol based data logger. IP based communication technologies are utilized like FTP, HTTP for secure data transmission, HTTPS, SMTP and so on. And all this is done by an integrated IP stack within the data logger. We have a lot of communication possibilities with these kind of data loggers. We support external, external modem, ISDN, satellite communication, DSL, there is an optional internal GSM GPRS modem, a 3G modem is in preparation at the moment, as well as we do have a LAN connection possibility. It's possible to run different operation modes like push and pull. Redundant communication path can be established for highest data availability in special application and industrial communication interfaces available like Profinet or Modbus and the data logger supports IP cameras as well as IP coupling which means the connection of various data loggers together via IP and the data loggers are capable to be network management from a central location. The software in the data logger is a modern real-time operating system and it offers flexible extension possibilities for the future. The hardware concept is based on a flexible sensor connection concept and one very important thing, it's an extreme low power hardware architecture which features standard interfaces like Ethernet, USB host and device, RS-232 ports, RS-485 for STI-12 or Modbus, STI-12 or analog in and outputs. The whole family is very easy to use with an intuitive operating program which is part of this webinar now. So it's an intuitive operating program with lots of features and helpful tools to support in your daily work. Additionally, a simple parameterization via browser is possible or a remote management via the internet. Now we come to the .NETDL operating program. This purpose we, we open the program itself and establish a connection with a data logger. Now I'm reading in a configuration of a data logger at my desk. First of all, this is the view of the operating program. The communication with the data logger is done here. So there are various possibilities. There is USB, and RS-232, which are typically local communication possibilities. That means I sit next to the data logger and I'm connected via a USB cable or an RS-232 cable. Furthermore, I have here the possibility with a modem or ISDN, which are classically remote communication. So I'm connected to the data logger via a modem or an ISDN line. And another possibility is IP. This could be either remote via an Ethernet network or LAN network or could be also locally.
So what are the new possibilities of the data log operating program? First of all, the phone book. If we choose here, for example, an IP connection, you see here the IP address of my data logger. You see here a small symbol for a phone book. If you click on that, you have all your past entries in this phone book and you have the name of the system, the number ID of the system, and in this case, the IP address. Every time you establish a new connection with a data logger, this connection is saved automatically here in the phone book and is available the next time you use it. You can also add an entry manually by pressing here new or you can edit also entries. For example, the communication we have up and running now is this here, Data Logger Operating Program Webinar. And this is the IP address. I can so say here edit and now for example add here a note. Let's call this webinar test. And you can see here now we have now this connection marked with a note where you can enter any text which makes it easier for you to identify each individual connection. This is possible for IP and of course also for modem connections then you would here have here the dial numbers, the dial-in numbers. So the phone book is used with IP as well as with modem connections. So this is a very helpful feature too if you have to manage a larger network with various data loggers to identify easily with which data logger you are connected at the moment. Let's leave the template, uh, let's leave the phone book and go to templates. This is the configuration of my data logger here and now there are possibilities to create so-called templates for the channels. You see here all these channels I created uh, for this configuration. Now if you want to do a template, you can easily create a template by with a drag and drop function. I'll give you a short example about that. Let's take channel number 10, which is the water level PLS. And now I do here uh, some additions. Let's put in here, for example, uh, a table in this channel. So now I, I enter here some values. It doesn't mean that these values are making sense. It's just to show you what is possible. So I add here a table okay now I have here this channel number 10 and now I want to create a template out of this channel how do I do that I have here a section store templates now I take this channel and with drag and drop move it down here to this section now I'm asked to enter a name for this template and I call this now just where in our template. Press OK. Now let's assume I do a complete new configuration. I have here an empty configuration and I want to reuse the template I just created. Now I go here to the list and look for the template I created, which is this here, webinar template or webinar example. Drag and drop again. And you can see I have very fast and easy put this template up into my configuration. And so you can predefine templates for you and reuse them in all your configurations you plan to do. So that's a very convenient way to save time and work with predefined templates. You see here also some other templates like Pluvio Combo, those are predefined templates and I'll show you how this looks like. You take this, put it up here. And now I have here a complete Pluvio configuration. It starts here with channel 105, 106, 107, 108. This is all from the template and now you can adjust it. You can adjust here maybe the the measurement interval if you want to change it 
you can say, okay, I don't need all this stuff. I don't need the daily sum. So I just delete it. So you can use this template and modify it to your needs. That saves you also a lot of time and efforts doing such configurations. Where do you find these templates? You can find templates on our web page. This is the odd homepage. If you go here to resources, and you choose here, for example, NetDL, odd NetDL. Then you see here NetDL templates, configuration for odd data log operating program. Here do you find today three templates, one for the Bluevial, which I just showed, one for a PLS, which is our pressure sensor, and one for the SE200. We are working constantly extending those templates and we'll add here more templates time over time. What you see here also in this section of our website, for example, the USB driver for the data logger, if you need that for any reason, or also some small movies which show how some, how some sensors are configured, the SE200, the Bluevio, the PLS. So this is a movie which shows you step-by-step -step how to configure the yacht NetDL data logger. So this is also a very helpful tool to give you very fast an idea how to configure these sensors. So let's close that. We are back at the operating program. So we saw now how to create a template on our own by drag and drop here to store templates or how to download a template from the website. Okay, let's go to the next topic on our agenda, which is the diagnostic file. The diagnostic file is very helpful, especially in terms of communication to identify possible problems. In communication, there are a lot of obstacles which can prevent a successful communication, which could be a wrong password on an FTP server, a wrong address of an FTP server, a wrong path, and so on. And sometimes it's not that easy to find where the problem is. The diagnostic file supports you here and helps you to get your system up and running in a very fast time. You go here to tools and you see here diagnosis. You choose diagnosis and then you say read. And now the program reads out every information which is available in the NetDL. This takes now some time because it's retrieved any information which can be found within the data logger. It's still working on that. Now it's done. What you see here is the date and when it's done, you see the station, the device, NetDL 1000, what is the firmware version and what options are actually active. And here you find all kind of information about the data logger and the communication. And in this information here, most problems can be identified very easily. You can save this to a file. And for example, if you have a problem and you wanna contact our hydro service, it's always very helpful to download this file and send this together with the actual configuration to hydro service. With these two files, the configuration and the diagnosis file, our hydro service should be very fast able to help you and to identify your problem. So again, you find this very important tool under tools, diagnosis. Another tool which helps you to work with sensors is the so-called STI-12 interface module. The STI-12 interface module can be also found under tools or STI-12 interface. If you click on that, the tool finds now the OTNETDL and now you can scan the data logger regarding sensors. If you don't know the STI-12 addresses of your sensors, you can scan here the whole range of addresses. I know that my sensors are in the range between 0 and 2, so I'll scan only this range because that goes faster. And I know also that this is a RS485 STI-12 sensor. So I press here now start bus scan. 
you see here in this small window what's going on and now the program scans via the data logger the STI-12 bus. Now it has found the Bluvio and the PLS. These two devices are now, now shown here and you see here the Bluvio, you see an image of the device and you see here the PLS. If you would have connected five, six, seven sensors they would show here in different tabs. Now let's see what can we do here. You have your standard STI-12 commands. You can say, okay, do a measurement, do identification, or just retrieve the STI-12 address. I will do that now. And you get in this window here the information. The address of this device is zero. But you can also change the STI-12 address here. You check the box right, press again STI-12 address, and now you have the possibility to change here the idea STI-12 address to any address you want to. These are the standard commands. Then we have the extended commands which are related to the device itself. So now here for the Pluvio. You see here firmware version standard interfaces, the bucket type, unit of intensity, unit of temperature, impulse output frequency. Those are all Pluvio specific things and, and every time you have a checkbox on right you can also change these values give you an example on the PLS same thing standard commands or also extended commands now these commands are related to the PLS for example you can change here the gravity of the device and so on you can do also here a firmware update of the PLS itself and what you also have here is a so-called terminal mode where you could do a transparent connection to the sensor now this is the terminal mode you enter here the command, here it says insert address automatically, that means now you don't have to type in the address. Uppercase letters, so it makes automatically an uppercase letter out of it. I do an identification and you see here the communication is now done in the terminal mode. This works with, of course, all odd sensors, then you get an image of the device and all those extended commands, but of course also any other third party STI-12 sensors are recognized and displayed but of course without an image and without the extended commands because we do not know all these extended commands but you'll find with the standard sensors always the standard STI-12 commands. This tool is a really great help to work with STI-12 sensors locally and no need to work just with a terminal mode and type in cumbersome commands but having this dashboard here to work with your STI-12 commands. I close this again. So this needs also some seconds to be closed because now it's disconnecting all connections and again you find this under tools and STI-12 interface. One thing I want to now mention also is not a new feature but a feature maybe not all people are aware of and this is the so-called online help. If you do a configuration, you might wonder, okay, how does this work? What does this mean? And I want to give you an example for that. Let's see my configuration here and I'll make that a little bit more, more clean. And let's say you work on the PLS, which is our pressure sensor. The PLS is connected to the NetDL via SDI-12 RS485. We saw it actually a minute ago in the SDI-12 tool. And that's where you configure it. Here you set the slave address, the values, you have here the measurement mode, concurrent mode, instantaneous value and so on. Now if you do that and you wonder okay what does concurrent mode now really mean? There is now no need to take the manual and then try to find the right page. If you are here and you want to know what this means, press now just the function button 1, F1. Now the help function opens and you are exactly where you want to be. You see here terminal block, measurement mode, slave address, concurrent mode. So the help is sensitive to where you are and now you can read here, okay, this means concurrent mode. And here you get exactly the information you need. And this works wherever you are within the configuration. So this was one example for the PLS. Action management, same thing. 
press F1 and now you get here action management, action tab settings, what are these settings, additional settings depending on the selected action then you can enlarge that here so you get all the information you need exactly at the point where you need them. So again this is no new feature that's always in there but I just want to mention that again that, that people are aware that this feature is available and it's very easy accessible just press the function button one F1 and you will get the help function. Okay. The next feature I want to show here is the data readout and display feature. This allows you to read out data from your data logger locally and display it. I'll give you an example how this works. You find this feature also under tools and you go here to read data. And now you can here select the channels you want to read out. I say now all sensors and you can choose here the time frame. So let's say we take the last two or three days and now we say download data. You see here with the green bar and the blue bar the progress every channel is downloaded into the system and when we are done we get an OK. Now the data is now available in the raw data management and you see here quite some, some data, some older data here as well but for example here you can now display this data as graphic. So this is the sensor 2 which is in this case this value here. So this is a temperature internal temperature of the data logger and you can display the data here like this. Now with function buttons you can work on the display with F11 you can change colors if you want to. You can change the way how uh, axes are displayed. You can change from a line to bars, step functions and so on. This all with F9. With F8 you can change the horizontal lines with F7 the vertical lines and so on. So this is the way to display one sensor. Same thing can also be shown in a table here. Okay. What you also can do is export this to CSV, to Excel, to MIS or Hydra 3 which are odd files. I'll give you now an example how to export it to Excel. Now let's say, let's see, we want to have this sensor as well as this, this and this and want to export that to Excel. Press this here and now all these values are exported to Excel. Still working. You see here the date and the time and you have here, oops, you have here the values and you have here in different tabs the different values I've just selected. Let's close that again. In export options you can also say multi-column export. You check this box and we do the same thing again. Let's take only three sensors. Export to Excel. Now the difference is we have the three values not in three different tabs but all in one Excel sheet. So those are the three sensors or channels I've selected. So this is chosen here by multi-column export or not. What you also can do if you do CSV export you can choose here the field separator, the decimal separator, the date format, time format and so on. You can define the path where the data is exported to. The same here if you do a MIS file or a Hydra 3 you can choose here the path where the data is exported to. And of course if you are done here or if you have a lot of information here 
you can do also uh, things like delete and then the things are not there anymore so this is a very fast and easy way to get a graphic or a table of your sensor or one or two or three or more sensors displayed automatically in the operating program or download it to Excel or any other program with CSV or to odd programs like Hydra 3 or MIS. You find this again like the others like odd STI 12 interface diagnosis here under tools. With this function I'm at the end of this webinar. If you have any question on that please do not hesitate to contact us and I hope this small presentation is helpful for your daily work. Thank you very much.